The Soulish Podcast. My name is Whitney Apke, and I'm your host. On The Soulish Podcast, we're talking all about the ish of our souls. The ish being negative thought patterns, blockages, and challenges. But we'll also discuss the aha moments, how to deeply connect with ourselves and others, and the breakthroughs, big or small, that we experience in our body, soul, and spirit. We'll dive deep and talk about everything in between, of course. And I'm so excited to share my experiences and thoughts, as well as bring on guests who are thought leaders and truth seekers. It's my desire to uplift, encourage, and inspire you in each podcast. Today we are going to get into a really fun chakra. This is kind of the most popular chakra, I think, other than the heart or the throat chakra is the sacral chakra. And the sacral chakra is personally my favorite. And maybe that's because I'm also a woman. So I liken it to like my womanhood, my my source of life and power and abundance. And so I love the sacral chakra. And so I'm really excited and looking forward to diving into this. In the overview of our seven chakras, I stated that the sacral chakra is the second chakra in our energy center system, going from the bottom all the way up to the top is how the chakras are numbered. And the sacral chakra informs how we relate to our emotions and the emotions of others. And when the sacral chakra is blocked, we can feel a lack of control in our lives. And that's because your sense of abundance and well-being and sexuality is all in your sacral chakra. It's very closely linked to your root chakra. So it, of course, is closely connected to your sense of being grounded and stable and secure and all of that. So when your sacral chakra is blocked, you're unable to have that energy flow from your root chakra through up into your sacral and for your sacral to be able to flow up into your solar plexus, which is your next one. The location of the sacral chakra is in your lower abdomen, about two inches below the navel. It also develops between the ages of 8 to 14. So it's very much in that developmental time as well when you're in puberty in your physical development. And so let's dive a little bit deeper into the sacral chakra. That's just kind of a little quick synopsis of what the overview of the seven chakras stated. But to dive in a little bit deeper, the second chakra is your center of personal power. That's why when it's blocked, that you feel that lack of personal power, of empowerment, of of security, of independence, autonomy in your life. You're going to feel threatened uh, of your like your empowerment and your your ability to move forward and make decisions and all of that you're going to feel a lack of that in your life if your bottom three chakras which are really like your grounding and stabilizing chakras where your security your sense of identity uh, flows from energetically so The second chakra is also the center of creativity and sexuality and also finances. Same with the root chakra because it's, it's about security and provision and abundance. Physical survival, control, and one-on-one relationships are the core of this energy center. So that is why it is a big deal. It's, you know, one-on-one relationships don't just exist in your heart chakra. Because the second chakra is where your personal power, your sexuality, your creativity, all of that is and, and flows from energetically, of course, it involves and is deeply connected with your one-on-one relationships. And this isn't only romantic one-on-one relationships. This is even familial relationships. So like your core relationship with your father, your mother, your siblings, your other family members, maybe your grandparents, your cousin, your uncles, your aunts. So it also has to do with friendships and those close companions that you have. It can even deal with your work relationships, your relationship to your boss or your directors or your relationship to colleagues. Any kind of one-on-one relationship 
um, are at the core of this energy center and really are um, affected by the flow of energy that is happening in your sacral chakra. If it is blocked, you're going to see conflict arise in those relationships, but you're first going to feel the conflict within yourself of your personal power, your creativity, uh, your sense of empowerment and well-being and security and stability. And that energy center being out of whack may even then also impact your root chakra. Or if your root chakra is having issues as far as feeling secure, stable, all of that, that's going to translate up into your personal power, your creativity, your sexuality, your finances, and you're going to start to feel that effect of that. It's going to trickle up instead of down in a sense because it's coming from your root where you're grounded. Um, so these these chakras are all very closely related and definitely intermix because we are not disconnected beings. We are very connected beings. So it's not that these separate energy centers are separate. They flow between each other. It's very much, if you think of it kind of like your spinal cord, but that there's just these pockets where there's this main energy is housed and moving and, and flowing from up and down like your spinal column, right? If you think of it kind of like that, it definitely flows very much like that. And any kind of blockages between the energy centers definitely affects the rest of your energy body, your spirit. And so it's really important to make sure that you are unblocked, that you are flowing, that energy isn't spinning out of control, you know, that it's also not spinning slow and and sluggish and uh, is hindered in any way. You definitely want to make sure that you are keeping up with that flow. And that's why meditation is so important and focusing in on these different areas of your life. I really like to use the sacral chakra as my place where I honor myself and that I honor other people in my life because there's the sacred truth with the second chakra, your sacral chakra, is that every relationship you develop from casual to intimate helps you become more conscious And the second part of this truth is that no union is without spiritual virtue and that every union is sacred, including the union with yourself. Because if we go back to the sacred truth of the root chakra, which is that all is one, then we understand that then therefore we honor one another. And so that is why it is so important. I think of sacral as sacred. This is my place where I I am sacred. This is where my sacred energy comes from. And sacred being life-giving, sacred being my identity, personal power, creativity, all of that. That's where this comes from and it all is sacred. It's where my virtue is. You know, if you think of it that way, not necessarily like your sexual virtue, but it can be as well very closely linked. And so it's really important to understand that from this place of personal power, you are also honoring that place of personal power and that you're honoring that all is one and therefore I honor all as one and that there's that lack of duality, that lack of distance and disconnectedness between yourself as well as others. Understanding that and that this energy flows through me, that it's actually generated from me as well. It flows through me. It's generated from me. That's why I like to take time and and give special attention, especially to these bottom three chakras, because a lot originates from these chakras. A lot of grounding the foundational energy source comes from these bottom three. So let's get into what kind of organs, because I always like this part because when you have anything kind of out of whack or blocked or hindered in your energy center, these are the organs that you can know it will be related to this chakra, to this energy center, because that's, that's where this energy center lives within you. And so your physical body is connected to your spirit energy body, right? So that's where this connection happens because we are not disconnected. Again, we are very connected beings. So the organs that can be affected by this energy center, the sacral chakra, are the lower abdomen to navel, the sexual organs, the large intestine, the lower vertebrae, the pelvis, appendix, 
bladder and hip area. And some of the effects that you can experience if you are blocked in this sacral chakra is arthritis, chronic lower back or hip pain, sciatica, same as root chakra, right, is the chronic lower back pain as well as sciatica, pelvic or lower back pain, sexual potency, urinary problems, prostate or ovarian or uterine illnesses, fibroids, menopause severity. So These are really interesting and they kind of are closely related to the root chakra because the root chakra is kind of housed in that area as well. So you definitely kind of see some crossover as what effects or organs are affected or influenced by this chakra. I think that's really interesting when we look back and even um, through my life and I struggled with like lower back pain and things like that. And I was always really afraid that I was going to end up like my dad in extreme amount of pain and being bedridden and not being able to enjoy life and be be present and things like that. So it's interesting, you know, when you look back and I'm sure you guys can like think back through your life and think, what have I dealt with? And How would this relate? Maybe you've never experienced any kind of issue around sciatica or arthritis or urinary problems or prostate problems or ovarian problems, fibroids, all of that, sexual potency. Um, No issues there, right? Maybe you've never had any kind of issue and that's cool. That's great. That means that probably you've never really struggled with anything in your sacral chakra and you have just had like a great flow of energy and that's good. That's what we want. We ultimately want that. So don't think like, well, I'm missing out. (laughs) You're not missing out. It's definitely good to have that flow of energy, but it's good to just have this in your mind of like, oh, okay, this is what could be a part of this chakra being out of alignment. So now that I know that it's really just purely for information purposes. So that way you can help either self-diagnose or if you have a partner or spouse, you can kind of be aware of that and maybe say like, you know, let's meditate and let's do like a sacral chakra, root chakra meditation, because these issues are kind of involved with those lower chakras. Maybe your energy centers need some attention, you know, and who knows, maybe that would be the, the thing that helps, you know, helps you helps the people in your life. And so it's just good to know because it's a part of the whole medical world that we have not addressed and that we have not connected our physical bodies with, but yet it is so deeply connected. We are energetic beings in a physical body and we have souls. So we are all connected. And so it's not just like, oh, are you going through a divorce? And that's why you're having these physical issues. No, it's so much more even connected to that. It's also spirit. It's also energy related. And what this person is going through, maybe they've been deeply violated in a way. And so that's why they're experiencing these uh, physical issues, but it's also energetic. So you can't just medicate the physical body, you have to address the energy, the spirit, as well as, of course, the emotional, the mental issues that are going on and habits and rituals and things like that. We're all super connected. So it's just really good to to have this in the back of your head and to not have a fear of it or anything. It's just another tool in your tool bag, as I like to say. So there are some issues that can also arise if this chakra is out of alignment or out of balance or blocked in any way. You can have a fear of loss of control. Again, that goes with the stability, the security, the feeling grounded. I think it's very closely linked with the root chakra in that sense. And through events such as addiction, rape, betrayal, impotence, financial loss or abandonment by partners or colleagues or family members. It can be that sense of loss of control and also fear of the future, fear of risk and your ability to take risks as well as your personal identity and also where you put blame and guilt and how you view money and sex and power and control and your relationship to creativity and that flow as well as ethics and your honor system, your value system, right? Like similar to the root chakra. And it's not just honoring, like honoring yourself, honoring others, but also like how you honor your partner, how you honor your spouse and the importance of that. So like if you're a cheater and you just religiously cheat in all your relationships, you have a total lack of respect 
dignity, honor for yourself and for the people that you have a commitment with, right? That is an issue. That is a major issue. And that energy is definitely within your sacral chakra. And if you're dealing with that, there is something off in your sacral chakra. And that energy of continuing that action, that energy builds up within you. And that may be what also pushes you or influences you in the direction of continuing to cheat. It's that feeling of power and control. And like, even if it's self-sabotage, right? Or sabotaging the relationship, you can have that energy and that karmaic energy within your energy system that just kind of perpetuates the same behavior. Not that you can blame it on that and take no responsibility for your actions, but it's just more deeply understanding maybe why there is such a drive and such an inclination towards a certain behavior that is either positive or negative. It doesn't matter, right? Hey, it's me, Wit. Did you know that I'm a certified life coach? I have been coaching and mentoring people for over a decade now, and I specialize with issues of the soul and focus on inner freedom and manifestation. I can help you realign with your values and purpose, break free from emotional blockages and negative thought patterns. You will feel motivated and encouraged to take the necessary steps to live a fulfilling life. We all need support and someone to cheer us on or hear us out, and it would be a privilege to be a part of your journey. My sessions are designed so that you are free to address whatever you feel is most important. If you are interested, simply go to WhitneyApke.com forward slash coaching and sign up for a free 30-minute call. I can't wait to work with you. So these fears and these issues can come again just from being out of balance and maybe being out of balance for a long time. It can even just come from having a blockage or having a negative experience that happens and that negatively influences you in such a way that you begin to have these different issues. It's the same thing if you're betrayed or you are raped or you deal and struggle with addiction or someone in your family did or somebody close to you dealt with that. Even even something that has happened to somebody else that you're close with, you can feel that. Because again, the sacral chakra, it informs you how you relate to other people and their emotions and how your emotions also influence or relate to others. So it's again, very much a connectedness energy. And so when someone else goes through something, especially in your family or a close friend, that also impacts you. That's not something that you just like are completely separate from. If we're all connected, if all is one and we honor one another, then of course, something that someone else is going through is going to affect you. I better relate because I better and more deeply understand that we are complicated, but very connected and very intricate and very delicate beings. And a lot of what we deal with is not just on this physical material level. It is very much spiritual and energetic as well as it is emotional and mental and has to do with our independence and our actions and our willpower. And, uh, the, you know, it's very sacred to understand each other as well as ourselves on every level. Like I was talking in last week's episode in regards to self-examination, a couple questions that I like to ask are, you know, do you use people or have you ever been used? Because that question is very telling of how the sacral chakra energy is flowing within you. If you've ever used people, it definitely influences you as far as your need for power and control. And especially sexually, if you go into a sexual relationship or encounter or experience with somebody and you're in it just for your gain, right? And your pleasure or your power and control and you need to exert that on this person is definitely coming from a place of needing to be the influencer, the decision maker, the one in control, the one in power. And there may be some sort of issue underlying there as far as your need for that, that that is something that is out of balance. And so it's really interesting, but the same would be said for the person who has been used. 
it happens on every level, right? But then what happens to you energetically when you've been used? You feel disempowered. You feel not enough. Again, your sense of security and safety, you can't rely on it. And so your ability then to even take risks and and you feel like you don't have that sense of being honored or preferred or kept safe or even respected, your sense of dignity, your sense of loss of control even, uh, and, and that can lead into so many other things. The next question I would ask is, are you comfortable with your sexuality? And if not, are you working towards healing your sexual imbalance? Also, do you honor your own sexual boundaries? And I think that's a huge one, especially for people that are trying to come into their own sexual power, sexual identity, and things like that. I think a lot of times in this world, we we want to progress quickly, and especially in our sexual understanding and knowledge and exploits and all of that and experiences, we want to quickly grow up because there is a lack of sexual boundaries in our culture and in our society, and that isn't just to deal with what we do with people, but it's also to do with what we watch, what we listen to, what we talk about. All the exposure to sex, all the exposure to even sexual acts, sexual positions, it's so hard to to keep sex sacred. And I think that when we don't see sex as sacred, it is hard to honor our own sexuality, our own boundaries in sex. And if you have any kind of issues or imbalances in any of that, that will affect that energy center. The last question that I really like to kind of ask is, do you keep your word? Are you a person of your word? And then what is your personal code of honor? Do you negotiate your ethics depending on the circumstance? Like, are you hard and fast, black and white, or are you a whole lot of gray? It's a matter of, do you keep your word? When you promise something to somebody, do you keep that promise? Do you negotiate your ethics, your values, your morals, depending on your circumstance or experience, right? Because that can shape you a lot too. You can go be all about something else because something really went wrong. And because of pain and hurt, you make a decision that you'll never, ever do that again or ever let that happen again, and you change, right? You, you make an agreement with yourself, a covenant in a sense, because of the pain. And so that can be a very powerful shift in your life that can either benefit you or not benefit you. And it's really good to figure that out and to examine that and ask those questions. Because ultimately, we want to have no blockages, no hindrances. We don't want to be influenced by pain. We don't want to be influenced by fear. We want to be influenced by balance, by peace, by joy, by wisdom from past experience. And so it's really important to hold on to our values, our truths. It's so important to have that sense of personal power, uh, identity in all areas of your life and of who who and what make you up, right? It is very, very, very important. And so that's why this sacral chakra is developed between those developmental years of eight years old to 14 years old. Those are huge identity years where you are gaining a sense of self-identity and well-being and and what it is to to be you and your personality, your preferences, what you like, what you don't like, all the simple things in life, right? You gain an understanding of and your ability to make decisions as well kind of come even more so when you're two years old to three years old and you're realizing you can say no. And so these years are definitely your formative and developmental years. And that's why this chakra is really kind of awakened in this time and developed in this time in our life. So it's really important that we understand how the sacral chakra moves us and how, how the energy flows and where it flows to, what, we're, what may be affected in our physical body with an imbalance or something going on in your life and how that's affecting you physically. It can be a tall tale sign that something needs to be addressed in your sacral chakra as far as energy and all of that. So I hope that this 
episode helps you even better understand how connected you are and better understand this energy center within you. And I'm so excited to continue on next week with the solar plexus chakra and it's going to be awesome. So definitely comment, rate and review and send me your comments, your love, your support. I would very much like it and any questions as well. I was actually thinking that a Q&A would be great after this series. So we'll definitely have to do that. All right, guys, see you next week. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Soulish is not only a podcast, but a community where we can relate to each other and support each other in our soul journeys. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at I Am Soulish.